This is probably going to be my largest collection of empties yet. Empties videos are interesting to me. I love doing them because I feel so accomplished whenever I finish a product and I like sharing like my full review and my full experience on products, but I also am a little bit concerned at how many empties I have. <laughs> this is going to be a very long video. So if you're going to sit through this whole thing in one sitting, please grab a snack or, you know, do your makeup with me, hang out with me because it's going to be a long one or feel free to skip around and just find what you want or come back to this video whenever you have some downtime. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name's Christina and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. So if you guys are looking for the best and most honest how-tos and reviews from a consumer's perspective, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave any comments that you have for me down below. Like I said, this is going to be a giant empties video. I have this big old uh, basket full to the brim of empties. I have some skincare in like the facial products, but I also have like body care and a bunch of makeup as well, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a rundown and a tiny little review of each. I'm not going to harp on one product too long, hopefully, but if you guys are looking for more in-depth reviews or you have more questions, leave them in the comments down below for me and I will make sure to answer those for you. Okay, let's start off with an empty that I just emptied out yesterday. It is the Super Goop play sunscreen this is one of my favorite sunscreens i love almost like the yogurt texture of it if you know what i'm talking about it's a very thin consistency it does come out white but it's clear on the skin because it is a chemical sunscreen i feel like this does really well on its own it gives me such a beautiful like glass like skin glow and it pairs well with any makeup that you may wear with it Pharmacy's Green Clean Cleansing Balm. This is the 1.7 fluid ounce, so it's not the standard size, but I finished this up. This is my favorite cleansing balm thus far. It's thin and it melts down really easily and it doesn't leave any sort of film or residue whenever you wash your face with it and it preps it for that first cleanse. This past year, I've been really obsessed with the brand La Roche-Posay, and this is no exception. This is their purifying foaming cleanser. This is going to be the cleanser that they recommend for normal to oily skin. They also have a hydrating version, but this is the foaming. I like this. I like the amount of foam it builds up on the skin, but it doesn't feel stripping or over drying, and I find that I could use this AM and PM. Took me a really long time to go through this because it is such a large bottle, which is really nice if that's something Thing that you're looking for like the best bang for your buck it's fragrance free as well and it is really good for like that sensitive skin type Next, another one of my Holy Grail Cosrx Snail Mucin Essences. I've been using this for about two to three years now, and it just gives my skin the perfect amount of extra hydration that it needs to plump and brighten and just prep it for more of my serums and my other like skincare ingredients. This really helps to like open up the skin to those other active ingredients, but it really creates like a nice barrier if your skin tends to be sensitive to those things. So it's really beautiful, really love this. I have a full video talking about this, but I still get inquiries about it. So I may do another video on it. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> the Laneige Cream Skin is a beautiful toner slash essence sort of lotion. I like the consistency of this. It is very thin, but it's also really creamy on the skin. It leaves your skin feeling like you use some sort of moisturizer, even though it is a toner. Um, it adds softness and hydration to the skin, and it's really nice if you need some sort of barrier repair or your skin just needs a break from like active ingredients. This is such a beautiful toner to use with it. It's a good go-to if you're having any like inflammation as well. So I have the Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm. This took me a really long time to go through and I'm pretty sure there's still a little bit of product in this. Honestly, I tried really hard to like this, but it's just not my thing. I prefer a cleanser that feels thinner than this. I'm not a huge fan of the consistency of this. You do have to use it on slightly dampened skin to really get the full effects of it, but I do feel like it takes a lot of work to remove that like um, that thick, balmy feel to the skin to prep it for that second cleanse. And I just felt like it was a little bit just too thick for my normal combo skin. I think that it might work well for someone that does have that drier skin type, but for me, this wasn't the best. 
Now a cleanser that I really did enjoy to remove my makeup is this Peach and Lily Ginger Melt Oil Cleanser. It dissolves, clarifies, and cleanses the skin. I like how light this one felt. It didn't leave any sort of film. It did remove my makeup really well, especially waterproof mascara or like the glue from my cluster lashes. And it lasts a really long time because you only need a pump, maybe a pump and a half to remove a full face of makeup. Another cleansing balm, this is just a small one. This is from e.l.f., the Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. This was fine, but it wasn't my favorite. It almost felt a little too light compared to the cleansing balm, like the pharmacy one that I enjoy, but it still removed my makeup very well. It didn't leave a film or anything, but it did take a second to get that film off. But I think it's good if you tend to only wear like sunscreen or if you are younger, like if you're in your early 20s or maybe your teens, it's just good to remove makeup you know i wouldn't say that you could use just this as a cleanser next i have this i'm from honey mask this is one of my favorite favorite all-time favorite masks if i can say favorite again it does have a subtle smell of honey to it but it's not like a candied honey scent um, it feels really creamy very luxurious i love the way that this feels on this skin i loved using this especially when i felt like my skin was super dehydrated or needed a little bit of barrier relief i find honey is a really good anti-inflammatory um, ingredient for the skin and whenever my skin was acting out or i was just using too many active ingredients at one time or if I was like spending a lot of time in the sun or just dehydrated in general this was an amazing mask for that I used this weekly maybe once or twice a week but the only thing is it's pretty expensive and it's really hard to get a hold of you can't really buy it in stores from what I can tell unless you have like an Asian skincare store near you but I would purchase this from yes style or style Vana. it's kind of out of the way to order but I love this one so much. The Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Hyaluronic Clay Pore Tight Facial Mask. So this was fine. Um, I enjoyed it when I had it, but I don't think I'll purchase it again. There's really nothing in here. I scraped pretty much everything out. It does have a subtle scent, kind of watermelon-like, but it also has like a clay-like scent to it. So it is a clay mask. However, it doesn't dry down the same way that a regular clay mask would. So it stayed creamy on the skin. My skin felt really soft when I used it because it did have those little black granules in it, but it was kind of hard to wash off. This was one of those masks that I would put on my face um, before hopping in the shower so I could just wash it off in the shower because those little granules were kind of hard to remove but yeah I mean it's good if you like a good clay mask but you find it's a little bit drying for your skin this would be a good option for you it does add a little bit of hydration to the face but it still feels detoxifying like a clay mask would the sand and sky Australian pink clay mask I didn't like this. In my younger days, I used to love a good clay mask. I felt like I really needed my skin to be sucked of the oils, you know, but now I tend to like to balance my skin with hydrating products and kind of get my skin to where I want it by adding the things that they lack. So hydration, you know, oils and stuff like that. But this pink clay mask dried before I could even finish it, but it was because I wasn't really reaching for it. I felt like it was way too drying on my skin. Um, I don't tend to have super acneic skin. I do have flare-ups here and there once in a while, like I'll have pimples randomly on my skin. So I didn't really find a good use for this. I felt like my skin was a little more normal than what this called for. I would say if you have very acneic skin, if you have, if you have very oily skin, this might do really well to detox your skin and get it to a better place. But for me, it was just too drying, too thick. Um, and I just had other products that I enjoyed more than this. The It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. This is for all skin types, the anti-aging rejuvenating cream. They did come out with a newer formulation. I've yet to try that. So this is going to be that original Original confidence in a cream that they did have. I think this is a great PM cream moisturizer. I don't typically use something like this 
in my morning skincare routine i find it's a little too thick for my skin but i love this at night it's super creamy it has like a medium viscosity to it where you can still blend it out and it does have a good slip to it but my skin really absorbs this throughout the entire night and i wake up with really glowing really plump skin also this jar will last you a really long time because you really only need like a pea-sized amount of this to cover your whole face and neck my husband uses this as well he does have dehydrated skin and he loves a good moisturizer like this one. The Dermalogica Active Moist Skin Balancing Prebiotic Moisturizer. This is nice. I really liked this, but it is so overpriced. Well, I don't know if it's overpriced, but it's very expensive. So I love this moisturizer because I felt like it was non-competitive to other products that have active ingredients. So if I was using something with a vitamin C or a retinol or I don't know, like a chemical exfoliant, and I didn't want to add like anything else that had additional ingredients to it, this was a good moisturizer to add because it does just provide the skin with moisture and it gives you that good like moisture barrier that good shield of moisture i guess it is quite small this is the 1.7 fluid ounce and i think this one is over 50 dollars. i could be wrong maybe 40 to 50 dollars. very expensive but it lasts a long time because it does spread out really thin and evenly throughout the skin so like that it cosmetics one you only need a tiny tiny bit when you use this i really enjoyed this especially throughout the summertime because it tends to be very hot and humid over here and this felt really like a glass of like water to the skin. The Ula Henriksen C Rush Brightening Gel Cream as well as the eye cream. I like these a lot. I've used these in the past. Like I've had the full size of this and I'm pretty sure this is a full size, but if not, I've had the full size of the eye cream as well. I do enjoy these. These are really nice vitamin C products. Ula Henriksen products in general are so beautiful. I feel like the formulations are so like straightforward and they do exactly what they say they're going to do. This gel consistency of the moisturizer is really nice. As you guys can tell, I really like that lighter gel almost consistency moisturizers because i feel like it just gives me the perfect amount of moisture without like bogging my skin down i did feel like my skin was always brighter and smoother whenever i use this and then this eye cream is just as good it does make me feel like my under eyes are brighter they definitely looked a lot more hydrated and moisturized whenever i use this and you need just the tiniest amount as well to go under the eyes and i like to go on the sides um and a little bit like on my brows i know that you don't necessarily have have like a lot of pores and stuff in that area but i just felt like it looked it made me look more awake oh and the eye cream is thicker than that moisturizer the gel consistency moisturizer but that's what i like i like a good eye cream that has a little bit of that creamy texture because i feel like it really absorbs nicely and gives me some plump hydration this clinique moisture surge 100 hour auto replenishing hydrator again it's a gel consistency and i really enjoyed this it is quite small like this insert stops probably here on the container so it's definitely a bigger jar than what you actually get but I really like this moisturizer I like that gel consistency I liked how this almost felt cooling on the skin because it was so hydrating I don't really know how to explain it but it feels again like a glass of water to the skin it was such a nice like finishing moisturizer for my skincare routine but it's very expensive if you got the larger size of it it's pretty expensive but clinique is a good staple it's fragrance free and a lot of people don't have issues with the formulations and this is one of the formulations or one of the products from clinique that i would recommend the Innisfree Intensive Hydrating Serum. I actually purchased the full size whenever I finished this one up. I really like this in conjunction with other products, other skincare like serums, you know. For a while, I was using the Good Molecules um, L Ascorbic Powder. So that's like the vitamin C in the powder form. And I was mixing it with this. I found it was a really good like vehicle for that powder. It really melted into this nicely. So those powder granules kind of turn into like a nice serum within this but by itself it's also a really good product it's just a good staple if you find that you have dehydrated skin but you don't want to add any active ingredients this would be a good option for you it'll add that extra boost of hydration that you need without irritating the skin but i may actually just keep this for when i do travel i'll just like refill it with the full size i have this glow recipe plum plump hyaluronic serum now i i wish that i had a bigger like 
like sample size of this i just got this as a sample whenever i went into sephora a couple months back i liked this but i felt like my skin wanted a little bit more hydration it was such a thin gel consistency that i was like man i wish like the hydration stuck around a little longer so i use this in conjunction with like that and this free hydrating serum and other like hydrating products it was good it wasn't like it is quite expensive i will say but it does say online that it has five types of hyaluronic acid so i'm assuming that does kind of add up whenever you create a product like that probably not my favorite hydrating serum but i liked it one of my holy grail products is this CauseRx Master Patch Intensive, um, like the pimple patches. There are 90 patches in here, a mixture of small and medium patches, which was one of the things that I really liked about this pack. You do get a variety of those sizes depending on how large your blemish is. Now, like I said, I do just get random spots here and there. Um, I have one right here right now, and I would love to put one of these on. I already have a new box that I'm going through, but I only require like pimple patches once in a while you know so i don't have like big chunks of like acne so these are really great i find that my skin responds really well to these because they have that tea tree and salicylic within the hydrocolloid bandage i find that if it's just a hydrocolloid bandage without like any sort of actives in it it doesn't do anything for me so i like this because i feel like it heals the spot and it really pulls everything out and then it puts in like that tea tree and salicylic acid to really remove the spot definitely within 24 hours the spot is no longer raised on my skin the redness is gone and it almost looks like it's healed completely i swear by these and i recommend them to everyone my tried and true Laneige sleeping mask, my OG. This is my favorite sleeping mask on the market right now. This is just the original berry scent. I'm going through a gummy one right now, the purple one. The scent is super subtle and it leaves the lips just so soft, so supple. If you have any dryness, this will remove it. But the reason I love this so much is because it leaves that hydration on the lips throughout the night. So when I wake up, I still feel like I have a good amount of lip balm or like the lip mask on. Whereas I've used lip masks in the past where it feels really nice going on, but by the morning time, my lips feel dry already. And I like to still have have like that good layer of hydration on my skin or my lips when I wake up so it lasts a really long time and this jar actually lasts a really long time you need the tiniest amount to cover both top and bottom lips I'll use it on my lips at nighttime after my skincare routine and in the morning sometimes I'll use this or I'll use like another lip balm like a creamy lip balm I don't think I'll stop using this anytime soon <laughs> the Tula sunscreen this is the chemical version they do also have a physical version but this one is the chemical I love the gel consistency of this. It is one of the thinnest face sunscreens that I have ever used. It does have like some shimmer in it. So it tends to, I think it's like a clear color, but there's so much like shimmer and glisten in there. I don't want to like put this on the back of my hand because it is very liquidy and it spreads on the skin really really nicely like pretty much any gel moisturizer would and it feels so nice and lightweight my skin absorbs it really nicely but even after my skin has absorbed the product it still looks very wet and glistening. if you like a super dewy look this would be a really great sunscreen for you and also I used to use this on the skin after my skincare routine and then i would put makeup on on top so it acts really nicely as like a glowy primer it definitely has more of a sheen than super goop glow screen and it feels thinner than that one as well so it doesn't necessarily feel like it's a primer in the sense that it would hold your makeup it just looks like a glowy like base for your makeup another really good sunscreen but it's very different from that tula one this is the la roche posay tinted mineral sunscreen this is a light fluid sunscreen it has spf 50 this one is the tinted version they do have just a regular version of this it's pretty expensive if you consider it drugstore it's 36 i think 36 or 38 dollars at ulta but you can use coupons on this so it's a very thin light consistency and it does have a tint to it however if you're much darker than i am it may leave you with a white cast i find that like on my forehead during the summertime when i was pretty tan it would take 
a little while for me to blend it in and once it absorbed into, into the skin I didn't have a white cast but just be warned it may have a little bit of a white cast I'm not entirely sure but for me whenever I didn't feel like wearing any makeup but I wanted like a little bit of coverage after my skincare routine I would use this and it would give me a little bit of an even tone on my entire face and it would just look a little bit more put together. I think it's a really great staple sunscreen. All right and my Naturium Niacinamide Serum. This is a good standard Niacinamide Serum. It's like a no fuss very like beginner friendly or even like advanced if you just want something that is like a standard niacinamide it's good the price point's really good you can purchase it at target and it helps keep the oils at bay not alone but it does help control those oils the youth to the people 15 percent vitamin c plus clean caffeine energy serum i actually really enjoyed this i feel like it really brightened my skin and it helped to like depuff almost i i don't really know how to explain it but i just felt like i looked more awake when i used this however i've recently learned that caffeine constricts blood vessels so that's why like if you use a caffeine eye cream it helps like to tighten and brighten there because you don't have as much like running blood there so that kind of freaks me out I don't know but if I am wrong about that or if you like caffeine products this actually made my skin look more hydrated and brighter and very smooth as well so I like this little uh sample size the Glow Recipe Niacinamide Dew Drops. This was my first bottle of it. I actually repurchased it during the Sephora sale, but I liked this, but I didn't realize how much I liked it until I was done with it, you know? So I didn't realize how much it was doing for my skin until I couldn't use it anymore. I like the thickness of it. I like that gel consistency and how it like slips onto the skin. I learned that you can actually use this as a primer for skin as well because it gives you that good moisture, but it's also oil absorbing because it is niacinamide. I have a new one, so you know, I do like it. The Tower 28 facial spray the daily rescue facial spray so i am learning that i'm just not a facial spray kind of gal like i like the idea of it i like i understand the lore of it the appeal but i'm just not a facial spray type of person i guess i feel like it's too old to keep spraying on my face it was okay though i felt like it was good to use throughout the day but it wasn't like a staple in my am or pm routine i hear that the new one the sos spray is really nice if you're having any sort of like inflammation or if you need help with the skincare barrier i hear that one is great but this one for me it was fine okay moving on to makeup so the first things i have here you'll still see the ribbons in here but i'm pretty much done with them like they're kind of like too gross to keep using so these are the lash links lash ribbons if you guys haven't watched my video on how to apply these and what they are then go watch that if you're curious but essentially they're like lash clusters but they are not cut so you cut them yourself to whatever size you want them these are the style n3 n2 they vary so 14 millimeter in length and 16 millimeter in length i love these these are my favorite like lash ribbons or lash clusters i think that they're amazing quality they look like lash extensions they look super soft and just like fluffy they last a really really long time after cleaning them i am kind of embarrassed to admit that i'm pretty sure these are the boxes that i purchased back in april before my wedding and then i used these during my wedding and then i used them for a couple months after that but i always cleaned them really really well in rubbing alcohol and i washed them with like soap and water so i made sure that i took care of them and they have probably gone through multiple washes i can't even tell you guys how many washes these have gone through but just know they last a really really long Long time I just love them I love the look of them and they're like getting lash extensions without the price point and I get to pick and choose when I wear them so love these go watch that video if you're curious about them and I already repurchased these the benefit 24 hour brow setter so this was the very first product I'm not kidding that actually held up all of my brow hairs before I started using soap the pear soap specifically this was the only thing I was using I'm pretty sure I've gone through maybe maybe like three bottles of this, but this is the best, most long lasting brow gel setter I've ever used. 
the wand is perfect because it has that longer bristle side and then it has the shorter bristle side so you can really push the hairs down and then you can feather them out on either side of the brush you only need a tiny amount or else you're gonna get like those like white flakies you know i found that i like this even better than the got to be and i use this in conjunction with any type of brow freeze so the anastasia brow freeze the elf brow lift any of those sort of like waxy consistency brow holders, I would use that to shape it and then I would fill my brows and then I would use this on like the tips of the hairs to keep them up and truly it lasts all day. Charlotte Tilbury's Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade medium, 4.5 medium. I've given up on trying to find this in a full size. I really do love this product, but now I have the e.l.f halo glow and that one it is pretty much a dupe if you haven't watched my video on that one i also have a video talking about like the comparison but this is so beautiful it gives the skin such a beautiful sheen it lays really well with any like foundation or any skin or makeup product that you use it on there are so many shades in the line now but again it's just so annoying that it's always out of stock like you literally can never find it in stock in the full size i've kind of given up on it i don't think i'll repurchase it again because i have a good like alternative to it my kosas concealer in the shade number six i was scraping this tube trying to get every last bit of this concealer because it is the greatest concealer i've ever used it is lightweight but it gives really good pigmentation it covers anything that i wanted to to cover it does not crease as badly as other concealers do under my eyes now any concealer i've ever used does crease under my eyes but this is a light consistency and it didn't make my under eyes look crepey or anything and i love it i've already repurchased it in multiple shades Okay, that was the only makeup. So now we're moving on to body care. Another La Roche-Posay product. This is the Lipicare Wash, the AP Plus. So it's meant for dry to extra dry skin. I love this. I recently included this in my October favorites video because I already have a replacement for it. But you can use this on the body as well as on the face. It is super gentle, fragrance-free, leaves the skin hydrated, but it also suds up really well. And I love a good sudsy body wash and face wash and it's just a beautiful blend of like probiotics and prebiotics and just all the good things it has like the spring water in it and yeah really love it highly recommend this is the tree hut tropic glow firming whipped shea body butter i do love this body butter if you're a fan of sol sol de janeiro's um bum bum cream it smells very similar to that it is not an exact dupe i will say this is a little more subtle it's not as sweet as that one but i actually like that about this it feels more like a thick lotion than a body butter it takes very minimal effort to spread this onto the skin which is why i really liked it i can't really speak on the firming i I don't really think there was any noticeable difference in the firmness of my skin, but I also use Maylee's products and those specifically work really well in targeted areas for firming and like lifting. So I did use those the same time that I used this, so I don't really know. But all I know is that I really like the consistency and the smell of this. I would repurchase it again. The Body Shops Fuji Green Tea. I think they discontinued this, which makes me so sad because this was my favorite scent from them. I love anything that is scented as green tea, I've learned. Ew, this one is like definitely bad. It's like very liquidy in there, but I liked this consistency. It is thicker than that Tree Hut one, but it's not super thick, you know? It gave me really long lasting moisture. If you like any of the scents from the body shop, I can speak on the consistency of this. I do like it. Probably my favorite category of products from Truly are the body scrubs. This is the Blueberry Kush CBD body scrub and I really enjoyed this. I love a good sugary body scrub that feels very like scrubby but it's not harsh and it doesn't feel like it's just scratching the skin. But this one smelled really nice. Kind of smelled like a blueberry candy sort of scent. It had a thousand blueberries, vegan collagen, cannabis, sativa, organic coconut, and AHA, BHA boost. I really enjoy this whenever I felt like I needed like some sort of exfoliation on the skin. It is the perfect amount of scrub. The e and every deodorant so this is my third tube of this but it's my first of this scent this is the citrus and vet vetiver vetiver it smells fine i tried i i don't remember what it is maybe it's a green tea scent 
that one was my favorite and I also used the lemon and lavender that one was nice as well this is a natural deodorant so I've been using natural deodorants for years and years now it is a little bit oily it does contain a couple of essential oils in it so it is gonna have that more oily feel to it but because of that it does slip on onto the underarms really nicely it does kind of ball up like it, it crumbles a little bit because it's so oily you can almost just like rub it into the armpits again you know so I don't know if that's a pro or a con <laughs> but it did keep me smelling fresh and it lasted a really long time these tubes are pretty large and it, it lasted a really long time and also I don't have it with me right now but the mega babe deodorant I'm pretty much out of that one as well and I like that one it is gonna be a little less oily of a consistency you kind of have to like hold it under the armpits for a couple seconds and then like rub it onto the underarms that one tends to be drier and a little more crumbly but it's good i mean i liked it and the scent was nice and it kept me feeling fresh the versed body lotion this was nice but again it was it was more like it was fine you know i like the tube of this it was really nice to travel with i love versed packaging there's something about how simplistic and minimal it is that just draws me in this is their firm ground retinol body lotion i do think that this one actually firmed my skin a little bit it does take a while to rub in it's going to be a thicker lotion and you kind of have to sit there and rub at it for a while because it turns into like that spread out like white cast you know and then you just like rub it and rub it to really get it into the skin it is fragrance free it has encapsulated retinol and cocoa butter and the encapsulated retinol is the reason why you can use this like during the day i didn't find i had any sort of irritation on the skin either last body care is this hemp's sweet pineapple and honey melon lotion i honestly to be completely honest it was fine but i got bored of it <laughs> it's such a big um, container and it lasts such a long time but this is the perfect body moisturizer to use if you want to just like slather something on real quick and be out the door it doesn't take as much effort to rub into the skin as like this versed one does and this pump container is really nice it's very easy so I would just keep this in my bathroom just pump out a little really quickly like put it on my skin and be done it, it would absorb very quickly so because of that it was perfect to use during the summertime so our next category is hair care the first one is this IGK Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray. I didn't finish this up to be honest. The scent is so extreme. It gave me a headache whenever I was using it. It's so strong of a scent. So if you're sensitive to very strong like perfumey scents, I wouldn't recommend this, which is a shame because this works really nicely. It gives your hair really good hold, really good grip, like everything you want from a texture spray, but it was just too much for me. The Briogeo Curl Charisma Rice Amino and Shea Curl Defining Conditioner. So I used this whenever I was getting my hair permed. It was really nice in the hair because I found it was a thicker conditioner so it felt hydrating but it also has that protein so it helps to bond the hair so if you're looking for more definition in your curls you may need a little bit of protein so I would use this like I think once a week or so so it took me a fairly long time to go through this but I liked it it added just the right amount of moisture but it also helped to define those curls the Fakai scrub exfoliant this is an apple cider detox so similar to the DP hue one if you guys have ever heard of that one one, but this one is very different in consistency and how it felt in the hair so I had used the DP hue one years and years ago maybe I had used it incorrectly but I hated that one I felt like it was so greasy in the hair and it just left such a bad film this one has like scrubby granules in it and it didn't leave any sort of like greasy residue I liked it but I also don't feel like it was life-changing for me I do tend to get like flakes and stuff in my hair when it's time for me to wash my hair it could be a factor of things it could be product buildup or it could just be an irritated or like itchy scalp I have yet to figure that out but it was fine it doesn't smell like apple cider vinegar it has kind of like a green apple scent to it which is nice I do have the smaller size of this one so maybe if I had the full size and really went through it I would have a better outcome but it was okay this is another sample size this is the perfect shine clarifying scalp scrub from nature lab this didn't really do anything for me it felt like a sugar scrub within like a balm so it didn't feel scrubby at all olaplex number zero so this is interesting you're supposed to use this with number three and i did do that maybe twice but this bottle only lasted me 
two treatments. The thing about this is it has a very specific sprayer. So when you use this and you spray from it, it is just a straight thin spray. It's not like a mist, you know what I mean? And I was like, wow, this kind of sucks. Like I thought I had a defective one, but then I looked it up and everyone was talking about how the sprayer is weird like that. So I had the idea to put it into a mister bottle, but when you do that, Oh my gosh, I was coughing so, so much. I think that there is a very specific reason why it's in that like straight, like very concentrated spray. Whatever chemicals are in here are not supposed to be like breathed in. So it's in that thicker concentrated spray. So take with that information as you will. It felt fine, but it only lasted me like two and a half uses. So I don't think it's worth it. So I have two more products. They're just in like a miscellaneous category. It's my Glossier U perfume. This is the only perfume that I've been using for years now. It's the only thing that does not give me an intense headache whenever I use it. And the only perfume that I have not gotten tired of. So this has like a pink pepper scent to it. I don't remember the notes, but I will put it on the screen here for you guys. It's just the best. I couldn't find specifically what it was called, but this has an ingredient in it that's supposed to blend with your pH levels and pretty much bring out your natural scent. So I think that's why it was so appealing and why it just smells so good. You just can't really put your finger on why this smells so good. And then my last empty is this Not Pot Original CBD Gummy. I have like three more gummies in here, but they're expired now, so I don't really wanna eat them. But they're a 20 milligram CBD gummy. It is berry flavored, or I guess like strawberry flavored. Whenever I felt like I was having really bad anxiety just randomly last year, I did purchase this. I have now learned that it was a mixture of just regular anxiety and like caffeine. So I I stopped drinking coffee and I switched over to matcha. I used to take these every morning whenever I had breakfast and then I had my coffee before I knew it was making me anxious. It does have sort of a weird aftertaste to it, like a CBD hemp aftertaste, but when you're chewing through it, it does taste good, tastes like a berry, and you kind of just have to like chew it, chew it, and then swallow it and wash it down with some water or something, but I thought that this was really nice. I don't know if it's placebo. I actually do think CBD does help me. It is kind of expensive, but I thought it was worth it because it just helped bring me a little bit of peace of mind whenever I would use them. All right, guys, that was everything. We finally made it through this entire video. If you stuck around till the end, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you thought about this video as well if you enjoy empties videos. I know a lot of people did say they enjoy empty, empties videos in my last one. So I'm curious to see who has like stuck around and I appreciate you guys. I really appreciate your support. It is so, so helpful for me. And another thing that's helpful for me is if you like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Um, and yeah, that's everything for this video. And I will talk to you guys in my next one. Bye.